Hi, everyone. Uh, I really apologize. I can't be with you there today. Uh, but we're not giving up. Uh, uh, we're making this recording from beautiful Maldives, uh, and hopefully it will do its job to introduce you to the aspects of airway in dentistry. My name is Kalina Borska. I am based in UK. I uh, uh, graduated in Poland. I've been working in England for 10 years, and I had this amazing opportunity to meet dental sleep specialists. And this is where big door has opened for to understand why do we clench brux? What are the most common reason of TMDs? And it is actually the tongue, tongue being dropped into the airway and us battling to get it out so that we can continue to breathe. And all the mechanical and skeletal damage is really secondary. And we as dentists have that impact. Uh, either we restrict it or we actually help the patients. And this is where the protocol is coming in, hopefully. It will be something you won't be nervous to use. Um, we are going to do a practical part in Cochin, if I get the visa, hopefully, uh, with Dr. Jim, Jay Bin in the Cochin Implant Center. There will also be a two-hour lecture, hopefully, uh, with the uh, Cochin Dental Association, a longer one if you want to go a little bit into more depth with these aspects. You, you are very welcome to join. It is booked for the fifth. Hopefully that will be uh, the case. So let's start with the presentation. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Lovely. So the protocol was the subject of my thesis when I was doing my uh, implant masters, but my aim was really to share that understanding further and uh, you are uh, that group of uh, listeners today a very important one uh, to some it, you you may hear it for the first time being students and that is really the best time to to have this understanding so here are some papers that i used for writing the thesis uh, there is really a lot of knowledge, but uh, for some reason it hasn't become a common one yet, but we, this is why we're making those efforts. Um, so please have a look at this beautiful image, which in a very simple way demonstrates where the paths are crossing for the airways and for the oral dental part where we come in, they do kind of cross behind the tongue and um, you will learn today now uh, how important it is to help to develop fully the space for the tongue. And when the prostodontic rehabilitation come in, we should never impinge it or orthodontic. We should always give more so that patients actually can breathe better while they are sleeping. So they are not having intermittent sleep to force them to you know, breathe, rather just sleep through it and self-repair daily, not to build up inflammation. Uh, so you can see now that our part actually has a huge impact on general patient's health, general health. So we're not just dentists, we actually have an impact on the whole of the body through what we're doing, and we need to do it right. Yes. So here is just a um, reminder of the benefits of breathing through the nose, which was designed to, to do that for us, breathing, it's a very long journey from the tip of the nose to behind the, th the tongue. When we mouth breathe, we omit all that journey. All those particles, uh, viruses, bacteria, they hit the valdea ring, meaning the tonsils, uh, the adenoids, and they swell up and they create more narrowing in this area where we actually want to widen the space. And also what happens, the air is saturated with nitric oxide coming from the sinuses. Nitric oxide is an incredible substance. It not only kills fungal bacteria, viruses, but also it's widening the vessels in small organs. It allows the oxygen to more effectively pass into them meaning the, the, the brain, all the organs in the body, we actually oxidate properly. We're not just breathing in and out the air, but actually uh, the, the oxygen can reach the cells more effectively. Here is the, um, the pulmonologist research trying to answer what was the 
level of carbon dioxide, um, meaning how we're reducing the amount of oxygen, what uh, amount triggers the masseter muscles. But during that study, what became apparent is that the first muscle that moves is the tongue. It does make sense because you want to lift it out of the airway and then you brace with masseter and all the groups of muscles to keep the tongue lifted, to keep the airway open. Um, so we can see that uh, it is the tongue that moves first. For patients who actually struggle with breathing for a very long time, that muscle actually grows. It's like a bicep. If you use a lot of it and it, and it occupies the, the mouth even more. So the, the, after you know, the a closure, when the tongue lifts and all the muscles activate to keep the tongue uh, up, uh, the, the wear of the teeth comes in uh, and, the, and because the tongue is enlarging, it will be more dramatic the, in time. So the sooner we do something about it, the less damage to the patient. So here is just uh, the part explaining that masseter muscle actually works as a stabilizer to keep the genuglossal muscle out of the airway. So here are some uh, images. Anatomy really answers most of the questions. Uh, you know, why we, why we have headache here, why the uh, certain um, appearances appear when we see the patient. It all really derives of where the muscles are attached. And um, soft tissues, not, it's not just the skeletal part of the TMJs, but all of the, that happens with soft tissue, it triggers the movement. The muscles are attached to the bone, so that they will affect it this way, but we need to uh, really be mindful of the soft tissues of the anatomy. So you are very welcome to take a screenshot of this uh, section. It describes the muscles that are used to dilate the airway. So we can see the hyoid bone, we see hyoid muscles, uh, we also see the um, the palatini muscles, the tongue itself, pterygoid muscles, very often patients suffer with pains there. All these muscles are used to keep the airway open. Now, if we look a little lower, we see the masseter muscles, temporalis, you know, the headaches, the tension headaches. It's actually the, the, all that workout we do at night to keep the airway open. So these muscles can trigger a headache. And also uh, having less oxygen in the brain will also create uh, those morning headaches for patients. So a little bit more anatomy and where the muscles are attached to, to which parts of the ske skeletal structure. Now, sometimes we may see in, in the patients uh, certain features, and if we have this understanding that the, the tongue needs to get out of the way, all the other muscles are to keep it up, and we can see those changes uh, in teeth. So if you can imagine we have the situation with a patient who has a perio, the teeth will start to migrate. Um, when you see the lateral open bite, that means this tongue its only way is actually sideways. That happens when we have really overlapping, uh, you know, deep overbite. The tongue will push sideways and we're going to have open ortho, uh, bites from uh, orthodontic ones and the relapses. Because if the tongue is still battling the new position of the teeth, they will start to move again. And the orthodontics won't be successful if the airway is taken into consideration. The uh, retainers are actually not so necessary. And it confirms that all of this is actually a correct path of thinking. When the tongue doesn't fit the mouth and it you know, wants to brace, to lift from the airway, you will see those indentations. They are very characteristic for patients who are fighting to breathe during their sleep. They're actually uh, our indicator of 70% uh, confirmation of having obstructive sleep apnea, OSA. Now, Vinci is saying that nature never breaks its laws. So if something is not logical, we may, we may assume this is definitely correct, but actually it doesn't work. We just need to step back and just observe the nature because it really has it all figured out. So it, this is just a little uh, encouragement to always just observe. Yes, I may be wrong. Please test me as well. 
Um, so going back to orthodontic uh, relapses, you can imagine with the tongue is pushing, you see that the whole, you know, cemented uh, fixed retainer, the whole section is moving. And we need to help the patient to breathe more easily. Here are some lovely images where the soft tissues, you see, the soft tissues also are affected by fat, uh, fat tissue. So if the patients, you know, put on weight, things are getting a little tighter here. And, and just to show you how the, the distances are quite small, um, it can be a dramatic change if patient, you know, was on that edge when he put on some weight. Now with lockdown, a lot of uh, people had this problem that they sleep don't, well, obviously there is a lot of anxiety and this uncertainty, but if on top of that, we get apneic episodes, it really perpetuates the problems. This is a really lovely image to show uh, where the muscles that help the tongue to be lifted are attached. And we can see uh, this, this image is to help to understand the tori, the, the palatal uh, tori and also a buckle on the side, because um, when the muscle is attached to the bone and there is a lot of pulling, a lot of work, that attachment will thicken. And these are the features we will see. You see the you see the gaps between the teeth, the tongue thrust, and the torus palatinus. You you will see all these things now. It will be just impossible not to see them anymore, which basically indicates that patient is struggling to breathe when he's supine, when he's laying flat. Because when we are approaching the deeper phase of sleep, we go to the deep relaxation, so that we don't reenact the dreams, that we don't hurt ourselves, and also we can self repair. Uh, you know, so the joints have the peace and they can self-repair. But this is where also that relaxation happens here. So if already there was a very small distance behind the tongue, collapse can, you know, total closure can take place. When the brain doesn't get enough oxygen, it will shoot adrenaline to withdraw you from that deep sleep, to wake you up, to gasp for air, take that breath. And secondary to it, you will breathe all these muscles to allow the air to pass behind the tongue. Now, if the bracing is not sufficient anymore because that tongue grows over time, the body will start to encourage the side movement. You get the bruxing so that the air can pass behind, at least on the side of the tongue. And that's where the dramatic wear takes place. This is where patients end up with teeth sometimes worn all the way to the gum because they're actually fighting to breathe while they're trying to sleep restfully. Usually they don't, they wake up very tired because they've been battling all night. So here we see some uh, buccal tori, you know, where the uh, buccinator muscle is attached. Okay. And we have the um, also myeloid mus muscle the, that, you know, creates the floor of the mouth. And you see, you, you see the teeth where here, you see the tori, you have, you see the tongue tie. That is usually the very first uh, problem when the kids are very small and that tongue can't reach the palate to stimulate the horizontal growth, but I will come back to it in a minute. Yeah. So pterygoid muscles, this is where patients complain of the pain. This is where often you get the release where you, know, you pressure these muscles and so the anatomy, and then you can see the features in also you know, quite known actors. Uh, the forward head posture, forward head postures, when you see older patients, you know, they just lean forward to breathe better. And then that's where also the, the neck pains uh, come in. Here is a really nice image showing the ligament being attached to the bone. And this is how it stimulates a bone growth. This was actually an image from uh, an, an the implant course where we all want to grow more bone to place the implants correctly. Uh, but uh, in creation of the of the tori, that is the mechanism. So when the, there is a lot of work in pooling, the body will just grow more bones so that it's just more resilient to that hard work that is making. Also, we can see, um, for example, on the lower image, we see the uh, angle of the jaw, you know, a, a, a of a little bit overgrown as well. This is where, uh, you know, all that, when the masseter muscles work, it can actually bend the jaw sideways and you have those indentations here. Uh, and also you can see an elongated, elongated um, 
uh, styloid uh, um, um, or just mineralized. It's, it's very long and uh, it can sometimes actually impinge muscles and patients feel, oh, it hurts when I turn my head. And when you look at uh, old images, it was called the Eagle syndrome, but actually it was also the, the, all that work the body has made to breathe better and created these skeletal changes. So yes, a Botox, a very bad idea because when you place Botox in the masseter muscles that are supposed to keep the airway open, you weaken them. So the apneic episodes are getting worse. So there is a reason why body is doing certain things. Um, it's better to understand why before we act in any shape or form, meaning firstly, do not harm, yes? So these are the features you will see in the patient's mouth and you may wonder why on earth this has happened. Hopefully after today's lecture, it will be much clearer. The reason why I have this confidence is because I treat those patients and it stops. They, they stop fighting for breathing at night. They don't have to clench anymore. So that trigger has stopped. So that means it was the origin of those changes in the mouth uh, and just patching it up with fillings really won't take you anywhere you really need to create more tongue space for that mechanism to at least reduce significantly and the protocol is for that purpose yes yeah, so you will see a fraction a fraction basically means when you clench teeth if you could imagine like squashing a ball at the very curvature the element are chipped out, a fraction, fracture out. Hence, we see those indentations in the neck of the tooth, in the weakest point. That's where the enamel is the thinnest. And that's why it chips away. And we see the, um, also the, um, the wear of the teeth. And sometimes patients are being told, you know, you too much fruit and the fruit is healthy. You need to just... Uh, eat everything in moderation and clean your teeth well. But when we see these features, most likely they, they don't breathe very well while they're trying to rest. Okay, yeah, so here another image of the styloid, um, styloid process uh, elongated. And you can also see the, the corner of the jaw, you know, the bone is very developed. This is where the masseter muscles are attached. Uh, so, and we have the square face, um, Yes, yeah, so some more images here. Okay, so I think we're gonna now move on to more symptoms. So the headaches, you see, they derive from where the muscles are attached. So if you do need to lean forward, you know, the forward head posture to create more airspace in the mouth, you will start to have certain pains. And um, uh, when we don't have oxygen in the muscle, it starts to hurt. Uh, so, children so you know telling a child please stand up right you know you if he can't breathe very well if his tonsils are huge the nose is very narrow he will have to do this to keep breathing so we we then should uh, you know um, encourage uh, nasal breathing sent to an orthodontist for children to encourage horizontal growth of the jaws you know knowing that the top arch blocks the lower one and the top, the maxilla is at the same time the floor of the nose. So if that's underdeveloped, the nose cannot really do its job and the jaw is trapped, it's re retracted. So everything is really blocked there. So the poor child having the nose you know, path really narrowed, he will start to breathe through the mouth and then tonsils start to swell up and the whole cycle starts. Also, you know, not being able to breathe at night, the the adrenaline throw to encourage you to breathe, it will circulate in the system. So the children will have it in their bodies, you know, they'll be exhausted, knackered, but they're actually will be very hyper. And then they're being told that they have learning difficulties and being given Ritalin, which is a derivative of amphetamine, a very serious medication. So all of this is really to highlight that we need to help to, to grow properly rather than treat with medication with awful side effects. Uh, so this is also where you're coming to help these kids to develop to their full potential.
This is very rewarding and very important. Forward head posture, we can see here how the volume of the airway is changing when we lean forward with all its kind of skeletal, all consequences throughout the whole body, because you know you compensate throughout the whole posture when you start to you know, have, a, have a different position. Um, so yes, so the measurements of the upper airway uh, volume, you, you, it's all doable through, through the means that we have nowadays, the three-dimensional images. Uh, so here we have children. So these are the features you can see in mouth breathing kids where the, usually the upper jaw is underdeveloped, the, the nasal passage is narrow. So yes, they look tired, they lean forward. And they, the path of the growth is actually down rather than forward and square face. You will also see the kids sleeping in very awkward positions because they just need to get that air in. And so, um, and here are some images of, you know, of how the forward head posture affects the whole, uh, you know, kind of compensation in the, in throughout the posture that later on will lead to those back aches. You know, my neck is hurting and I have problems there. And when it's, you know, chronic, that's where those aches and pains just accumulate throughout your lifespan. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, um, you know, you can imagine, you know, from the, all that clenching and grinding, sometimes patients, when they lose one tooth on one side, it creates more pressure in one joint. So they will tilt their head, escaping the pain. And then the arm goes up and then the hip moves and the knee. So they walk with those compensations and they start to develop pains there. But interestingly, when we address the, the top uh, kind of, um, uh, sorry, uh, when we start to address the TMJ, uh, 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 gosh, joint, which uh, is the top, uh, which is the top joint, he start to decompensate all along the body. I was really surprised when uh, patients were reporting, oh, I don't have the pain in my hip and I don't have the pain in my back anymore. And I was just creating more space for the tongue and decompressing the joints, uh, bringing back the you know the, the 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 straight position in this section, and it was just taken all the way down into all the way to the feet. Um, so that's also where you guys come in. Yeah, you need to understand these aspects. Okay, so we'll just take a pause here. <laughs> 